heard me say it before, but I'm going to repeat it. American riflemen are the best riflemen in the world because the training they get is the best in the world. You've begun that training with the sighting and aiming exercises, and you're ready now to go on to the next step. Position exercises. There are four firing positions. Prone, sitting, kneeling, and the standing or offhand position. You know, any old timer can walk down the firing line and come pretty close to picking out the men who'll do the best shooting. There's nothing mysterious about it. He simply spots the men who've taken the best positions. Good positions mean good scores. Poor positions mean poor scores. It's as easy as that. But here's the thing to remember. We're not teaching you these positions so that you can riddle off a string of bullseyes on the target range. We're teaching you to kill your enemy before he can kill you. If you're going to survive on the battlefield, you've got to be able to shoot fast and straight from any position. You've got to be able to drop into that position instantly, automatically, without thinking about it. And it must be correct the first time. Take a good look at these positions. They look easy. But you're not going to find these positions easy at first, because they make you use muscles you never knew you had. But don't worry about that. We'll harden up those muscles. Your work in the position exercises also covers the use of the sling, holding your breath while aiming, and aiming. We'll take up the sling first. Anyone here know the reason for the sling on the rifle? Carried with, sir? That's right. Any other reason? Peterson? Yes, sir. It's a big help in steadying the rifle. Check. That's the answer. Now let's see how we go about getting the effects of it. There are two ways to use the rifle sling. The first, like this, is called the loop sling. The other, called the hasty sling, is rarely used except in the standing position. And we'll show you how to adjust it when we come to that position. The loop sling is used in all other positions. Here's how to adjust it. Place the rifle butt on the right thigh and cradle it in the curve of your right arm so that you've got both hands free to adjust the sling. Unfasten the lower hook and refasten it near the butt swivel. This loosens the lower loop. Unfasten the upper hook and refasten it so that the upper loop hangs down to about the pistol grip. But it may need further adjustment. The correct place for the upper hook depends on the man. You'll get your fit by trying it out. After your instructor is satisfied you have the right pair of holes, mark them so that you'll find them at a glance. Twist the sling one half turn to the left and insert the left hand through the upper loop from right to left. Slide the loop well up your left arm Leave the loose end free and use both hands to work the upper hook and the first keeper down close against your arm. Then pull down the second keeper against the upper hook. This locks the upper loop in place against your arm and keeps it from slipping. You can't shoot with a loose loop sliding down your arm. Once the loop is correctly adjusted, move your left hand over the top of the sling and place it under the rifle against the upper sling swivel. The rifle must rest in the V between your thumb and forefinger and on the heel of your hand. Wrist straight, fingers relaxed. The sling must lie smoothly along your hand and wrist. If it doesn't, you've done something wrong. 
This is the way you hold the rifle. Now let's go over the loop sling adjustment once more. Place the butt on your right thigh, cradle the rifle in your right arm, unfasten the lower hook, refasten it near the butt swivel, twist the sling a half turn to the left, insert your left arm through the upper loop from right to left, Pull the loop well up your arm. Then work the upper hook and the first keeper down against it. And pull down the second keeper to lock the upper loop. So much for the loop sling. Your instructors will go over this detail with you. Are there any questions? Yes? Sir, with Japs and Germans shooting at you, like you said, Looks like you wouldn't have much chance to get that sling on. Keep thinking like that, and you'll live to tell your grandchildren about it. You're right, of course. Use the sling whenever you have time to use it, because it gives you greater steadiness. After you've learned sling adjustment, you're ready to start work on positions. Let's take a look at the prone position first. In the prone position, the rifleman lies flat on his belly with his legs stretched out comfortably. His inside ankle bones are on the ground, or as near it as he can get them without strain. His spine is straight. His body makes an angle of 30 degrees or less with the line of aim. The amount of the angle depending on the rifleman's build. When you're trying out these positions, your instructors and coaches will help you to find the angle that suits you best. Thereafter, it's up to you to practice the position until you can drop into it without thinking about it. The sergeant here is well behind his rifle. His weight is relaxed forward against the sling. Thus his body takes up the recoil and he is not jolted out of position each time he fires. Look at his left hand and arm. The rifle rests on the heel of the hand in the V between the thumb and the first finger. His left wrist is straight. His fingers are relaxed. His left elbow is under the piece. It's vertical. I can press down hard on this rifle and it'll give a little, then come right back to its proper position. But when the elbow is not under the piece, the least pressure will make the rifle sag way off to the side because muscle instead of bone supports it. A muscle gets tired, a bone doesn't. So remember, elbow under the piece. Now look at his right arm and hand. His right elbow is a little forward of his right shoulder. His right upper arm makes an angle of about 45 degrees with the ground. His shoulders are about level. The rifle fits into the hollow of his right shoulder. That's important. Raise your left hand and feel that hollow in your shoulder. Curl your shoulder forward and the hollow is still more pronounced. Now look at Sergeant Higgins. See how snugly his rifle fits into that hollow? I don't want to see anybody in this company trying to shoot with a rifle on the point of the shoulder here. All that will get you is a sore shoulder. And that means flinching. And flinching means poor shooting. Grasp the small of the rifle stock firmly with your right hand. And get this. Put your thumb across the stock or on top of the stock, never alongside the stock. With your thumb in the right position, you've got a firm purchase for your trigger squeeze and a good support for your cheek. The finger goes inside the trigger guard against the trigger and the finger is clear of the stock. You can use any part of your finger from the tip to the second joint to squeeze the trigger. What seems natural and comfortable to you will probably give you the steadiest squeeze and for that reason is the best. Press your cheek firmly against the stock and on your thumb. Let your neck muscles relax and hold your head so that you're looking not out of the corners of your eyes but straight ahead with your eyes level. 
That's the correct prone position. It varies a little with each man, depending upon his build. But there isn't much difference. You'll soon discover the exact position that suits you. From there on, it's a matter of practice. You will have targets to aim at in all of your exercises. Every time you get into position, align your sights on a target. A good soldier does this instinctively. He never even thinks about it. Here's something else. When you take any of the correct firing positions, you will find that the rifle aims naturally and without effort at some one point. If this point is not on the center of the target, move your whole body till the line of aim is the natural line. There's a good way to tell if your body is lined up correctly. After you're in position, close your eye and relax. Then when you open it, if you're on the center of the target, you're okay. If not, shift your whole body. If you shift the rifle independently, instead of your body, you'll be in a strained, uncomfortable position. And no man can shoot his best when he's fighting his own muscles. These men are demonstrating some of the things not to do. But they are common errors. Let's take a look at this first man. His body is at too great an angle with a line of aim. Now he's behind the rifle, as he's got to be. Look at this man's right elbow. It's too close to his body. He's unsteady. His left hand's too far back. And he's got his thumb alongside the stock. Now he'll assume the correct position. This man's left elbow is not under the piece. They'd have a devil of a time staying on the target. Errors like this stand out plainly. Others are not so easy to pick up. When you're acting as the coach, keep a sharp eye on your pupil. When he's wrong, show him where he's wrong and why. Then make him take the correct position so the point will be burned into his mind. Don't forget, when you take the prone position correctly, the muzzle will automatically drop back on the target after each shot. This saves time. And in battle, a few seconds are enough to settle the argument between you and that guy on the other side. Now, the sandbag rest position is just like the prone position, except that a sandbag is used to support the left forearm, wrist, and hand. The pupil takes the correct prone position and aims at his target. The coach then manipulates the sandbag until it is slightly higher than the back of the pupil's left hand. The coach punches the sandbag with his hand until he gets a perfect fit. This is the coach's job. The pupil can't do it for himself. Next, he faces the pupil, straddles the rifle barrel, and slides the narrow side of the sandbag against the left forearm so that it supports the forearm, the wrist, and the back of the hand. Only the back of the hand rests on the top of the sandbag. It's a common error for beginners to rest the rifle on the sandbag, but it won't work. The sandbag supports the forearm, wrist, and hand. Now Sergeant Higgins is going to show you the sitting position, which is a good one in high grass, brush, or on sloping ground. For the sitting position, you'll usually have to make your sling two holes shorter than for the prone position. Your body faces half right from the target. As you sit, spread your feet apart. Farther apart than your knees. And brace your heels firmly. Get your toes down, flat on the ground if you can get them there, and relax your ankles. Keep your knees straight up, not bow-legged. And keep them fairly low, about 10 inches off the ground. The point is that you've got to get the back of your left upper arm 
firmly brace three or four inches down on your left shin. In this way, with your left elbow under the rifle, where it belongs, the weight of the rifle comes straight down on your leg. Hold your right hand and arm as you do in the prone position against your right knee so that your right shin bone forms a block for your upper arm. Lean well forward from your hips, not your waist. Keep your back straight and your weight forward. Don't rest your elbows on your knees. You'll wobble. Your elbows will roll around. No man can shoot in a position like that. Get your arms well down on your legs, several inches. Remember that left elbow. Keep it under the rifle. Now you've got a solid, steady position and you won't be knocked off balance by the recoil. That's the normal sitting position. It's the best one and it'll be used in this company. We may have a few men of exceptional build who are not suited to it. Heavy men may have to use the crossed ankle position. And men with exceptionally long legs may have to take the crossed leg position. But your platoon leaders will decide which men, if any, are to use these alternate positions. Now, if there are no questions, we'll go on to the kneeling position. Your sling is usually the same length as for the sitting position. First, the half right face. Then get down your right knee and sit on your heel. So that your top of your foot is flat on the ground. It takes practice, but you can do it. With your heel inclined toward the target like this, your foot helps to brace you against the gun's recoil. Don't sit on the inside of your foot. Rapid fire make you bob around like a cork. Sit firmly on the top of your heel with your weight well forward. Your left elbow is under the rifle and in front of your kneecap. Never on top of your kneecap. The position of your left leg depends on your build. The taller you are, the farther to the front your leg will be. Your instructors will help you find a position that suits you best. But your lower left leg, as seen from the front, must always be vertical. Keep your right elbow comfortably high. This makes a snug seat for the rifle in the hollow of your shoulder. If you drop your arm too far, the hollow disappears and the rifle butt tends to move out to the point of the shoulder. Another thing, the lower right leg forms a right angle with a line of aim. At first you'll find the kneeling position unsteady, but don't worry about it. It will never be as steady as the prone or the sitting position, but practice will strengthen your muscles and increase your steadiness. This brings us to the standing or offhand position and the hasty sling, which is rarely used except in this position. Let's start with the sling. First, loosen the lower loop, twist the sling a half turn to the left. Hold the rifle with your left hand just back of the upper sling swivel and your right hand at the small of the stock with the thumb well over on the left side. Then swing the rifle so that the sling falls high on your upper arm. Let go of the rifle with your left hand, pass it under and over the sling and regrasp the rifle near the upper sling swivel. The sling now lies smoothly along the arm and hand. It holds the left upper arm and stretches tightly across the chest. That's where you get support and you need all you can get in a standing position. Adjust your sling for a tight fit. Your instructors will help you. When you get it right, mark it. All right, Sergeant, let's see that again. Here's how to take the standing position. Face right until you're almost at a right angle to the line of aim. Place your feet about a foot and a half apart. 
Keep your body erect and well balanced. As you raise your rifle to firing position, fit the butt into the hollow of your shoulder, but higher than in the other position. High enough so that part of it can be seen above your shoulder from the rear. If the butt is too low, you'll have to strain your neck to get at the sight. If the butt is where it should be, your head and neck will be erect and natural. Keep your right elbow up. The higher, the better. At first, you'll find this unnatural and uncomfortable, but practice will fix that, and it gives you the power of all those arm muscles to take up the weight of the rifle. Here's an exercise that'll loosen up the shoulder joint. When you've done it enough, you'll be able to hold the rifle up with your right hand alone. The main job of the left hand is to steady the rifle, not to support it. Keep your left elbow well under the rifle. and the left hand as far forward as you can get it without strain or discomfort. At best, the standing position is unsteady, but you have to use it on the range and you have to use it in battle. So it's up to you to make the most of it. And that means plenty of practice. Nearly every recruit gets a brilliant idea of how to overcome this unsteadiness. He pulls his left arm back against his ribs, balances the rifle delicately on his thumb and two fingers, and blazes away. But that doesn't work, does it, Sergeant Higgins? No, sir. There's only one right way to hold the rifle in the standing position, and the sergeant is showing it to you right now. Thank you, Sergeant Higgins. Now you know the positions. I've given them to you, one after another, to let you compare them. See where they're different and where they're the same. All except the standing position have these points in common. Always hold the rifle at the small of the stock with your right thumb on top of or across the stock, but never along the side. Always keep your left hand against the upper sling swivel with the rifle in the crotch formed by the thumb and the first finger, wrist straight Fingers relaxed. Always have your left elbow under your rifle and always squeeze the trigger with whatever part of your forefinger between the tip and the second joint feels firmest and most comfortable. Always press your cheek firmly against the stock and hold the butt of the gun in the hollow of the shoulder. In the standing position only, your left hand need not be against the upper sling swivel. Put it as far forward as you can comfortably. And your left elbow doesn't have to be directly under the rifle. Make these habits automatic, and they'll save you time and help you get a well-aimed shot off in a hurry. In these position exercises, of course, you don't squeeze a trigger. That comes later. But as soon as you're in any of the firing positions, you must hold your breath and aim. You do this in dry shooting, and you do it in actual firing. We'll show you the right way to hold your breath and still be comfortable. Take an ordinary breath, then let a little out. Then hold the rest of that breath while you aim and fire. To keep the air in your lungs during aiming, close your throat by swallowing. But uh, don't hold your breath too long. If you do, your muscles will get tense, and your eyes will blur, and you'll get wobbly. When this happens, relax for a moment and start over again. But don't think you can practically hold your breath. You either hold it or you don't. And while you're aiming and squeezing the trigger, you've got to hold your breath. Whenever you practice any of these position exercises, always check your position carefully. Close your eyes and then open them and see if you're on the center of the target. You must always have a target. Then hold your breath and aim. When you're coach, check your pupil carefully for all these points helps them. And it helps you, too. You learn from your pupils' mistakes. 
You know, it's a soldier's skill that brings him through a battle alive. And the degree of skill you attain as a soldier depends entirely on you. You've got to master not just one firing position, but all four. The enemy isn't going to give you a chance to choose the one you like best. You may be standing in a foxhole with your elbows on the parapet, or behind a tree, or a wall, kneeling in a shell hole, or heavy undergrowth, sitting in a sniper's post, or in a field, or you may be prone in a ditch, or out in the open. That's why we teach you the four firing positions and drill you in them until they become second nature, to get you ready for the tough spots. There'll be plenty of tough spots. And when you get into one, your whole job will be to get your shots off fast and hit what you're shooting at. So work on the firing positions now while you can. Later on, you'll be mighty glad you did. Because you'll get your enemy before he gets you. <laughs> <laughs> 